Hi, I'm Chelsea, of Friday Pattern Company, and this is the final Ilford Jacket Sew Along video. So in this video, we are going to go over pockets, buttonholes, and buttons. And so we are going to talk about how to make the pockets, and then also how to design your pockets on your Ilford so that you can get really creative. I'm also going to include all of the pockets as a free download, so that even if you don't have the Ilford Jacket and you just want those pockets to like put on stuff, you can put these pockets on anything. They're patch pockets, which means that they are just sewn directly on top, not integrated into the garment. So slap these pockets on whatever. You got like a bag that you want to put a pocket on, What? sky's the limit. Anyway, so that'll be down in the um, description. So we'll talk about, yeah, designing them, get really creative, how we can make our Ilford situa pocket situation really special, and then we'll go over buttons, and buttonholes, which is a pain point I know for people who, you know, they get to this point and they have a great jacket and they're like, I don't want to ruin this by like messing up my buttonholes and getting really frustrated with the project. So I have some tips and tricks to hopefully make that a little easier for you. And yeah, I think that's it. Uh, like and subscribe if you want more sewing content in your life. Okay, let's get into it. The method for creating the product pockets is all pretty much the same except for with the hand warmer pocket which we will cover. So we're going to start with this upper rectangular pocket and the first thing you're going to do is finish the raw edges on three sides. You can use whatever seam finish you want. I'm just zigzagging so that it overlaps the raw edge of the fabric. So I've done that here and done it on three sides and we're going to go to our iron. The three sides that you finished are going to get pressed under one half inch all the way around. So I'm just doing those one at a time. After you're done pressing the three sides, you'll press the top under the unfinished edge on the top under three quarters of an inch, and then you'll press it under another three quarters of an inch. Then you'll edge stitch across that top an eighth of an inch from that folded edge. Here's what that cute little pocket looks like finished. Next up, I want to show you one of the angled pockets and how that's done. It's the same method, it just is a little bit different with the pressing. So I finished the edges and now I'm pressing each side under one half inch and I'm just taking it, these little corners, one at a time. So it's just, you know, pressing each straight edge under one half of an inch and working your way around the pocket. And again, it's the same method at the top where you're going to press it under three quarters of an inch and another three quarters of an inch. I'm using a different ruler here because I lost the other one between <laughs> making these two pockets. So I'm not using anything fancy. It's just a whatever ruler you have on hand. And here's your finished angled pocket. The last of these types of po this type of pocket that I want to show you how to make is the pencil pocket uh, because it's so cute and popular. So this is the pencil pocket. I've finished the three edges and now I'm just going to press the sides under one half inch, and then I'll press the top under three quarters of an inch twice, edge stitch, and we are ready to apply these pockets to the jacket. Now we're gonna move on to the one pocket that has a slightly different construction, the hand warmer pocket. You're gonna take it over to your ironing board and you're going to press this diagonal edge under three quarters of an inch towards the wrong side of the fabric. Then you're going to press it under another three quarters of an inch and you'll edge stitch just right along this fold one eighth of an inch from the edge. Here I have that edge stitched and I finished the raw edges of the pocket. Now we're going to work our way around the pocket and just press the edges under one half of an inch. Just in case you're wanting to add any flaps, I'm going to show you how to assemble one of the flaps. So I've got my rounded flap here and you're gonna cut two of these as well as one interfacing. Once you have your pieces cut, you're gonna to wanna to mark your buttonhole placement on the right side of the flap that you want facing the outside of your pocket. So if you were using two different fabrics, whatever you wanted facing outward, you would use here. And I'm just marking that with chalk. And now I'm fusing interfacing onto the wrong side of that pocket flap that I marked. Now you're going to grab both of your pocket flaps and we're going to push, press the top edge under one half inch towards the wrong side. And you're going to repeat that on both flaps. 
Then you're gonna place your flaps right sides together and sew around that curved edge, keeping that flap, the top of your flaps pressed under. So here I have that finished. Now you're gonna trim away excess fabric and flip it right side out and give it a good press. Okay, here's the fun part. So once you have all of your pockets assembled, you can start to place them out on your jacket and get creative and have fun playing around with different things. So maybe you wanna set your pockets wider apart or closer together and just mess around until you like the way it looks. You can also experiment with your upper pockets, like where you, how you want them to align with your lower pockets. If you wanna do totally mix and match or have you know two sets of the same pockets. And if you're adding a pencil pocket to your pockets, uh, you can apply it on top of pockets. You could do it on the bottom, the top of a pocket, on one of your upper pockets, on one of your lower pockets. You could put it on its own. You could put it underneath the pocket. There's so many different ways you could place this. And I think you should just have fun messing around with different things and figuring out what you like. And once you've played around to your heart's content and you have your plan, you can uh, start pinning them in place, which we'll cover in a minute. But I wanted to show you one more fun thing I'm doing to this jacket, which is adding pockets to the back. So I wanted to add a couple back here, and I know these aren't like super functional pockets, but I think they'll be really fun, and it adds a little bit of extra look on the back. So now I'm just playing around with where I wanna place these. If I wanna add a flap, you know, just messing around, doing like a partial overlap. Just having fun, you know? I wanna cover how, if you're gonna stack pockets, how they need to be assembled. So I'm gonna stack these two pockets on the back. I need to sew this edge of the pocket in place before I apply the pocket to the jacket. So I'm gonna go do that. Here's that done. So now we are going to reinforce the corner of the pocket right there uh, before we attach it to the jacket. You can do this by just back stitching a couple times when you sew it on, or you could sew like a little triangle. What I'm gonna do for this one is a bar tack, which will give it kind of a cool look and also make it really durable. Some sewing machines have a bar tack stitch, mine does not, so I just set a zigzag to about three millimeters wide and then the shortest length possible, and I'm just testing it on a little scrap. Since I'm liking the way that looks, I'm gonna go ahead and do that on my pocket, and you could do these as long and short or you as you want, you could do them kind of um, horizontal on the pocket. It's up to you. I'm doing them just a full three quarters inch from the top to the sew line on the pocket. Now we're going to attach this pocket to our jacket. So I am using Wonder Tape. You can pin these in place, but I wanted to show you how you can use Wonder Tape to make this process really easy. So again, use pins if that's what you've got, but what I'm doing, Wonder Tape is like a two-sided tape that doesn't gum up your sewing machine. So I'm just sticking this all to the edges of my pocket that are gonna be sewn and then I'm peeling off the like stuff to expose the other side of the tape and then I can just whap, just slap that right down where I want it on my jacket and it will stick in place. So I'm just aligning that on the back there. Now I will take this over to my machine and edge stitch these three edges in place and add in bar tacks. So here I am doing that. So you'll sew down the pocket to the bottom corner and then lower your needle, lift your foot and pivot. Sew across the bottom. And if any of your you know, pocket layers are kind of poking out like I had here, you can just readjust as you approach them and then just continue to the other side, lower your needle, lift your foot and pivot. This is the same method that you'll use to apply all of the pockets. So the angled pockets, the hand warmer pocket, whatever. You're just uh, edge stitching them in place and then adding some sort of reinforcement at the corners. Here's the jacket with all of the pockets sewn in place with their bar tacks and everything and we are ready to add buttons and buttonholes. Your pattern came with this buttonhole guide that you will align with the top of your button front placket and you can just mark these with chalk. You can choose whichever side you want to put your buttons on. I know there's a traditional side for men and women and it's different but just go with whatever you, however you want your buttons to be. 
Now we are at our machine ready to sew on our buttonhole. So I have this buttonhole foot that I set the button inside that measures the size of the buttonhole and then I just put that on my thing and I pull this sensor down. Pull it down all the way. That is what has gotten me so many times is it's not pulled down 100%. I always test my buttonholes on a scrap. So that's what I'm doing here just to make sure that they look good and kind of make sure that the size is right because your button might be a slightly different size than what the pattern was designed for, which is fine. You just want to know ahead of time how big your buttonholes are going to be. I've actually cut out that little buttonhole test and I'm just comparing it to my marks to see, to make sure I like the look of it. And yeah, it looks good to me. Okay, moment of truth, we're at the machine sewing our buttonholes on. So you just line it up and make sure nothing is in the way of that sensor or else it will trigger like sh your buttonhole to end shorter. But I, this was an easy buttonhole process for me on this project. Everything went smoothly. So I'm just uh, <laughs> showing you here with these buttonholes. Maybe this boosts your confidence. You can do it. Once our beautiful buttonholes are in place, I like to fray check the back of the buttonholes. This is not necessary, but you know, just to give them a little bit of extra durability on, I like to just add this to the back. If you're using something, a light fabric or something where this might show, don't worry about it. But if you want and you have fray check around. So I just did that and then I let it dry and now I'm going to cut them open. I like to put a pin at one end of the buttonhole to protect it from getting ripped when I come in here with my seam ripper. So I've protected the far end of the buttonhole and I'm just going in there with my seam ripper and just slowly ripping them open. And you'll just open up all of your buttonholes and then we are ready to sew on buttons, which I'm also gonna show you how to do on your sewing machine. Whenever I can, I like to sew my buttons on with my sewing machine and it's kind of scary, but once you get used to it, it's life changing. So again, I'm using Wonder Tape on the back of my button just so that I can set it in place and it won't move around. You can put tape over your button, but it's possible for it to gum up your machine. Anyway, so here I have that placed and I'm just going to set it very carefully underneath my presser foot lower the presser foot and then I'm just using my hand to bring the needle down to make sure the placement is right because you don't want your needle to hit the button. You want it to go through the hole. I have it set to, it's actually the same as my uh, bar tack, but it's a zigzag um, that is at the shortest length and you might need to widen or narrow your zigzag stitch so that it fits in your button. But once you have it right, you can just give it a few stitches and you're gonna wanna leave your uh some threads like a little bit long so you can tie those off later but yeah and then you just go through this has the four holes so i have to do the lower ones as well and i'm just zigzagging those carefully in place this is sped up but i'm going really slow ta-da that is it you've got all of the your jacket all done all you need to do is pull these use a needle to pull the threads to the back and then tie them off and then your jacket is done Now it's time to play, what do I have in my Ilford jacket pockets? So I've got a notebook, a pencil, a mask, sunglasses, my wallet, and my phone. I've got dried mango from Trader Joe's. And then back here, this pocket's not super accessible, but I have managed to fit Joan Didion's masterpiece, Run River. So I'm like all set to go to the park and read and draw and snack and talk on my phone. Literally everything I need fit into this. I don't even need a purse anymore, to be honest with you. <laughs> and that is it for the Ilford Jacket So Long. Thanks so much for joining us and I hope that this was fun and inspiring for you. Leave us a comment below on what you wanna see next.